greatest story ever told. Presented by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. He who has been called the Prince of Peace brought to this earth a new way of life built on kindness and goodwill. Today, the meaning of his message is more vital than ever before in the history of the world. The town of Bethany. On other days, a quiet, peaceful town. But today, there's a great stir. For instead of accustomed hundreds... Bethany streets are filled with thousands of people, and they are anxious people, awed by the presence of one about whom they have heard a strange, yes, an incredible tale. Most of all, the people crowd around the temple, for he is there, and they are anxious to see him and hear him speak. Let me through, sir. I must see him. I. they all say the same. There are more people in the temple today than I have ever seen before. All to see him. I- I've heard he was actually raised from the dead. Oh, you mean Lazarus. I thought you spoke of the master. I came to see Lazarus first. If it's true that Lazarus was raised from the dead, then I want to see the master. Lazarus was dead three days. Three days? And he was brought back to life? You can't disguise your wonder. Maybe you doubt. But I saw it. I believe, for Lazarus is a brother of Mary and Martha, whom I have known since childhood. I tell you, I saw it. And is Lazarus inside the temple? He is. Then I must see for myself. Make way for me, please. Oh, I'll stand aside. The people have come from Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Nazareth, from all over the land. They are as eager as you to see Lazarus and the master. I say, make way. Please, make way, please. I must see Lazarus. Quiet, son. This is a temple. Oh, yes. Which one is Lazarus? He sits up there on the platform. Oh. It's a miracle. A miracle. More than that happens here today. The master has just spoken of eternal life. Eternal life. Is such a thing possible? It's what he said. But there are people here who disbelieve, who question him. But they dare to question one who has raised a man from the dead? They'll try. But quiet now. The questioning is about to begin. And now, the master will answer all questions. Who would ask the first? I would like to ask a question. Who is that man? Nathan, a very clever lawyer. And he is a bitter man. He doesn't believe Lazarus was raised. You may ask your question, Nathan. The uh, master has spoken of eternal life. And that is certainly an inviting prospect. If the taxes are ever reduced, am I right? (laughs) He's trying to heckle the master. Oh, he's a smart one, that Nathan. Now, uh, there's only one small question I have to ask. What is the secret of this eternal life? Is it perhaps achieved by some magic brew compounded by the witches in the hills of Galilee? (laughs) Can it be bought? Can it be earned? My question, Master, is this. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Well... That's a question filled with a great deal of malice. Nathan knows how to ask such questions. But wait for the master's answer. My friends, we must have quiet. Nathan, would you repeat your question for the master? Oh, gladly. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you read it? 
What is written in the law, eh? Well, there's a part in the commandments which says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. That's how I read it. You have answered right. Do this and you shall live. Ah, but there are words here that could stand some explaining, if you can explain them. Take just one. The word, uh, neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Is he the man who lives next door to me? Or uh, in my own town? Or in the next town? What I want to know is, who is my neighbor? To think the master was being tried as a criminal, the way Nathan Cross examines him. To some... Any man with a new idea is a criminal. But the master's calm. Look at his face. Did you ever see such calmness and such kindness? Even toward Nathan. Now he's going to answer. Perhaps with one of his parables. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves. Samuel. Samuel. Yes, Esther? Maybe you'd better not take your new clothes. Do you want me to travel like a beggar? You'd be less conspicuous if you did. Ah, I understand now. You're still worrying about my safety on the road. Well, so many men have been attacked by bandits lately on the road to Jericho. I'm sure if I had time, you'd tell me all over again how they tie ropes across the road to unseat riders and how... please. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to joke about your worries. Not any more than I'd joke about my love of you. But if my brother sent for me, there must be a good reason. Maybe my mother's health. Whatever it is, I assured him I'd come to Jericho as soon as he sent for me. So, dear, let's finish with the packing. Everything's ready except for your money belt. I promised I'd let Jonathan bring me that. It makes him feel so important. Uh, Jonathan! Jonathan, I'm ready. Oh, yes, Father. Elson, you have the money belt? Here it is, Father. And it's heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> if you have to carry a burden, gold is the best I know of. Let me help you put it on. Of course. I put it on this way and... There, I tightly. Uh, yes, Father. Samuel, I still wish you wouldn't go alone. Ah, now, Esther, please. I'm going to Jericho alone only because I can't help it. Well, I can go with you. Oh, indeed. But uh, who would take care of your mother? Oh, well, that's right. Oh, but I know someone else who's going to Jericho today. Saul's father. Today? Yes. You see, Samuel, you don't have to go alone after all. Why, of course. And whom do we have to thank for it? Why, my son. Jonathan, you're proving to be a great help to your father. I'm proud of you, son. Thank you, father. Uh, but I'd better go find Saul's father now. Uh, tell me, Jonathan, do you know Saul's father? Have you ever seen him? Oh, yes. He's a wonderful man. Very kind. Well, nice. It's nice to be with him. But now I'd better find out when he's leaving. Certainly, but there's no need to run. Oh, I'll have to. You see, I have to go down to King David Street to find Jonathan! Him. Yes, Father? Did you say you were going to King David Street? Why, yes. Saul lives there, and if I want to talk to his father... Jonathan! Well, what's the matter? Just who is Saul's father? Ephraim. Ephraim of Nablus. Of Nablus. And King David Street. Uh, just as I thought. Of course, he's a Samaritan. Yes. Well... Is something wrong, Father? Is something wrong? In heaven's name, son, don't you know about the Samaritans? What do you mean? I don't ever want you playing with Samaritan boys. Is that understood? But why? Why? Well, for one thing, Samaritans are dirty, shiftless people. Well, Saul isn't dirty. Besides, they're not to be trusted. But, Father, Saul is an honest boy. He never cheats at games. Jonathan, will you listen to your father? Yes, Father, but can I even ask why? Well, well, Samaritans are traitors. 500 years ago, when the Babylonians invaded our land, it was the Samaritans who collaborated with them, who ate at their tables and even married their women. 500 years ago? 
Well, then you can't blame Saul for that. He's a Samaritan, and it's in their blood to be cheating traitors. Father. Yes, Jonathan? What you said about their blood, it's not so. And what do you know about such things, may I ask? Saul and I, we made a pact of friendship. I cut my hand and he cut his and we mingled blood. It looked the same, his and mine. A sacred pact of friendship with a Samaritan. Esther, did you hear? Please, dear. Now, now, I've heard everything. Jonathan, you may leave the room, but before you go, promise you will not play with any Samaritan boys again. But, Father... I said promise. Father, please, Saul's my best friend. Promise. Yes, sir. You may go now. Uh, I can't get over it, Esther. What's happened to the boy? Is, is that why I work so hard? Give him the best of everything so he can associate with Samaritan boys? Please, Samuel, don't think about it now. You've got a dangerous journey ahead of you. Samuel. Yes, sir. Would it really be so bad if you went with this Ephraim of Nablus? Esther, I'm surprised. I'm sorry. I, I only thought of your safety. After all, who would see you on the road? Oh, you can't tell about things like that. Some important merchant might see me. The, the word would get around that I associate with Samaritans. I, it might ruin me. I'd rather risk it alone than be seen with a Samaritan. And now I'd better go. I've already put a skin of fresh water and some cheese and bread in the camel's saddlebag. And here are your clothes and the gifts I got for your mother and ah, brother. Good, good. Samuel, take care. And on your way, stop in at the temple to make a sacrifice. And pray. Don't I always do that? Now, goodbye, dear. You will take care. Of course. I'd better go now. Samuel, haven't you forgotten something? Forgotten? What we always used to say when we parted. The Lord keep watch between thee and me. While, While we are, we are absent, absent, one, one from, from another. find favor with the Lord so that he grants you a safe journey. Amen. Amen. And thank you, good priest, for your benediction. I trust you will have good luck on your venture. Where are you going? To Jericho. Jericho? Oh, that's bad. Yes, if it weren't a family obligation, I wouldn't risk it. Well, it, it's not so dangerous as long as you go in a caravan. Caravan? Uh, I'm afraid not. I can't wait until one leaves. You mean you're going alone? Yes. My camel's outside, and I'd better leave now if I want to cover the road in daylight. Keep a sharp eye to the road, Simon. I'm watching that, but this time I hope it's a caravan. My share of the booty has been pretty slim lately. It's more than you deserve. You miserable weakling. I may be small, but I'm not a weakling. Haven't I wrestled and thrown camel drivers twice my size? Wrestled? You're a poor excuse for a bandit if you can't stand the sight of blood. Give me a man who can kill with pleasure. When you start talking that way, I pity the next travelers who come along this road. Just keep a sharp watch. A bandit without a taste for blood. 
Sometimes I think I should work alone. By Wait, about... half a minute. The traveler is coming on a camera. See? Off there. We'll stop him where the road curves. Let's get moving. Surely, friend. I'm Samuel of Jerusalem. You're welcome to drink all you can hold. I thought you said you were alone. <laughs> My friend's a little man. He can't drink much. Come, Simon. The man says we can have a drink. No, wait. I but... doubt if you are a traveler. You don't look like one in this. Get around I... on the other side of him, Simon. Say, what is this? You hear that? What is this? <laughs> Hand over your money belt if you know it's good for you. Money belt? So you are a bandit. Yes, I'm a bandit. <laughs> you hit him a good one, Ackman. Don't talk so much. Just a smart get his money. Sure. Hurry, get the money belt and let's get out of here. Sure, but I, I think you gave him too heavy a blow. Shut up. Search him, get his money belt, and let's go. Yes, sir. Belt is tight, tight, but I'll... <clears throat> there. There it is. And a heavy one, too. It'll buy many a skin of wine. Let me have it. Here. His clothes are not so bad, either. Well, don't stand there talking about his clothes. Take them. I'm taking them. Oh. Still alive, is he? I'll fix that. Not in the jolt, too. I don't like victims who moan. Yeah. Well, that's done. Now take his camel. <laughs> If we ever get caught, there's one man who won't be able to identify us. Come on, weak knees. <laughs> yes, sir. Help! Someone help me. I'm a traveler who's been attacked by bandits. Ah! Who is it out there in the darkness? I'm by the side of the road. I've been badly beaten. Help me. And endanger my caravan. I'm getting taxes for the king from the temple. If you're from the temple, surely you'll help me. It's your duty to man and God. I can't stop and risk the gold. But I'm dying. Help me. At least give me some water, please. Please. Oh, stop, drivers. Get your camels moving. We must get away from here. This may be a trap set by the bandits. Hey, driver, shot over! Help me, please! I'm dying! Help me! Another caravan. If I could only get up. Help! Help! Out there in the darkness. I'm Samuel of Jerusalem. I've been beaten by bandits. I can't move. Help me. I need water and clothes. I'm freezing here in the night. Help me. A man who travels alone deserves to die alone. From the size of your caravan, you must be an important man. Can't you spare even a skin of water, an old coat? I tell you, I'm dying. I am a servant of God on urgent business. I have no time to stop. If you're a servant of God, could you let a man in distress die? To me, you're not a man, only a voice in the dark. Move on, men. Move on. No, no. You must help me. You must. I have a son, a wife. What the hell's it? Help me. Move on, I say. <laughs> What is to become of me? Am I to die out here on the road? Isn't there anyone who'll stop to help me? My wife, Esther, and my son, Jonathan. 
But won't they ever see me again? Or even know what's happened to me? Oh, dear Lord. There must be help somewhere. From someone. Huh. Who's coming? Who is it? Help me. Help. Who calls out there? I'm a traveler from Jerusalem. Attacked and beaten by bandits. Help me. Help me. Pastor Campbell. There's a man in trouble. I'll help you, friend. Here, let me... Oh, he's fainted. Oh, maybe he did. I'd better give him some water. Here, friend. Let me lift your head. Now, think. Thank you. Thank you. Don't bother to talk now. You must save your strength. And I'll soothe your wounds with some of this oil I have. I don't mean to hurt you. Forgive me. But I must fix your wounds. There are many of them, and they're deep. But this oil... Yeah. Oh, sometimes a man must hurt in order to heal. I'm doing the best I can. The oil will ease your pain. <sighs> Better. Better. Good. Now I must get you to an inn. Thank you. But first, let me put my coat around you. You're naked and cold. But what about you? I'll fight the cold by walking. You must ride my camel. You're doing too much for a stranger. A man who's a stranger today may be a friend tomorrow. Here, take my coat. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! Who's knocking this time of night? I have a traveler with me. He's sick. He needs a bed. All right. I'll open up. Say, I say this man isn't sick. He's been beaten by the bandits, probably. Yes, but talk won't help him. He needs a comfortable bed and good care. Well, if the bandits got him, he probably doesn't have the money to pay for a bed and food. I didn't think to inquire, but I have the money. May I feel the weight of the coin in my hand first? Please, this man is sick. A sick man may die. And who's to take the risk? Not me. <laughs> the coin. Here. All right. You can bring him in now. Lean on me, friend. Thank you. Rest here. Thank you, friend. I'd stay here with you, except I have urgent business in Jericho. But you'll receive good care here. Isn't that so, innkeeper? Of course. As long as the money holds out. I'll be coming back this way in a few days with more. Give this man everything. I'll pay for it. As you say, I'll get him some milk now. You've been very kind to me. Why? You're a man. Isn't that reason enough? But others passed me by. A man who's suffered hardship and hatred knows the value of a kind deed. When you return from Jericho, we'll go back to Jerusalem together. You must be a guest in my house. Perhaps. I insist. There must be some way I can show my appreciation. Besides, my wife and son would never forgive me if I didn't bring you home and do you honor equal to your kindness to me tonight. Your wife and son might not think so highly of me. Why not? Because I am from Nablus. You, a Samaritan? Yes, friend. So, you see, your wife and son might not welcome a guest called Ephraim of Nablus. Ephraim? Why do you say it that way? Forgive me, Ephraim, forgive me. For what? Without knowing you, I've hated you. I don't understand. I'll tell you about it one day. But now that I know who you are, I insist you not only dine with us in my house, but bring your wife and your son Saul as well. You know that I have a wife and a son. Yes, I know. And there are many things I know now that I never knew before. It isn't a man's face or his possessions or the way he speaks or the place he was born which determines how good a man he is. 
It's what he does towards his fellow men that should earn him his place in this world. And yours, Ephraim, should be among the highest. Promise you'll come to my house, please. I promise, Samuel. Master spoke wisely. Yes. And now Nathan looks humble and meek. Not defiant as he did before. Wait. The master's going to speak again. Which now of these three do you think was neighbor to him that fell among thieves? I know now, Master, the man who showed him mercy. Go thou and do likewise. to The Good Samaritan, another episode in the greatest story ever told from the greatest life ever lived.